Okay, in this video, let's talk about how to find the nth term for a geometry sequence and also the nth partial sum and also the infinite sum. Let's go ahead and get started. Firstly, let's have a geometry sequence first. I will just write it down as a1 and then a2 and then a3 and then so on, so on, so on. And I'm going to stop at an. Here, we will just have a sequence because I'm just putting on commas. This is like a list of terms. And in order for a sequence to be geometric, it's the following. We will just start with the first term and we keep multiplying by the same number over and over. So we multiply by this number we call the r, which is the common ratio. And then we do the same from the second term to the third term. And then so on, so on, so on, up to the nth term. Now, here's a question for you though. How can we find a formula for a n? Let's think about it. In order to get to a n, don't we need to know a1 first? Yes. So yeah, start with a1. And then what else do we need to know though? How many times that we are multiplied by the r, right? And how many times did we do that? The answer is, if you say n minus 1, yes, you are right. We just need to multiply by r raised to the n minus 1 power. Let's, let's just have a concrete example. a1, a2, a3, a4, and then a5. How can we get to a5? Let's start with a1. Multiply by r one time, two time, three times, and then four times. And as you can see, we can write a5 as a1 times r four times, which is to the fourth power. So if this is a 5, this will be a 4. This is a n, this will be a n minus 1. So this right here is the nth partial sum formula for a geometry sequence. Next, let's talk about the nth partial sum. It's the following. The notation is Sn, and this means we are going to start with the first term, and then we are going to add the second term, and then add the third term, and then so on, so on, so on. Here, for the nth partial sum, we are going to stop at the nth term. So we add a n. OK, and now let's see what we can do. In fact, let's do what we did. a1 is still a1, and a2, let's write that in terms of a1. It's just the first term times r one time. So a2 is a1 times r to the first power. And then plus a3 is just a1 times r two times, which is a2 times r to the second power, and then so on, so on, so on. And the last term right here is, of course, just that, a1 times r to the n minus 1 power. After we finish this, you see that all the terms, just kidding, all the terms have a1, so we can factor that out. And then we will have a1 here, and then we will have the first term being just 1, and the next term we have r to the first power, and then the next term is r squared, and then so on, so on, so on, up to r to the n minus 1 power. Good. But imagine if n is equal to 100, then in fact you have to do like this at 100 terms inside. That's not good. But don't worry. Notice how beautiful this is. 1 plus r to the first plus r to the second, and so on, so on, so on, up to r to the n minus 1. Check this out. I am going to multiply this by 1 minus r. And you'll see a lot of things will cancel. But of course, I cannot just multiply by this. Don't worry, I'm going to divide the whole thing by the same thing as well. So this and that is 1, so they are still OK. Now, I will just really show you the multiplication. Let's just put a1 all the way in front, and let's see what will happen. I'm going to take 1 and then distribute backwards, yeah? So take 1, I'll put this down in red. 1 times all that is 1 plus r plus r squared plus da 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 up to r to the n minus 1, yeah? And then I'm going to have the minus r times 1 is minus r. Minus r times r right here is minus r squared. Minus r times that, you get the idea, huh? minus r to the third power, and then it will be all minus. And then lastly, this times that, this is r to the first, r to the n minus 1, 
we add the exponents. n minus 1 plus 1 is just n, so r to the n. And on the bottom, we still have that 1 minus r. Now, what's happening though? Well, as you can see, here we have the plus r minus r gone. This and that cancel, and then we do have a minus r cube. But don't worry, it's just right here. I didn't write it down, but it's there. Right, it's there. Cancel, cancel, and so on, so on, so on. Is this going to get cancelled? Yes, because remember, this right here, its previous term is minus r to the n minus 1, that can cancel with that. So, as you can see, finally we will just get a1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r, just like that. So this right here is a proof for the SN formula, and let me just write this down right here. SN equals A1 times 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. Now for the last one, we have S infinity, and that is, we are adding infinitely many of these terms. So we will have A1 plus A2 plus a3 plus dot dot dot, and we are not going to stop. And you might be wondering, if we are adding infinitely many things, shouldn't we just get infinity? Well, no, it depends. It depends on the common ratio. In fact, if you have done some calculus, then you can just look at this equation and say, take the limit as n goes to infinity. If the absolute value of r is less than 1, then this portion here will go to 0 and you have the formula for s infinity already. But let's not do that for this video because this is not a calculus channel. I will show you guys a more fun way to do it. Have a look right here. This is our s infinity expression. I am going to write that down again right here. But this time, for all this, I will just keep them in terms of a1 and r. a1 is still a1. a2, let's write it as a1 times r. And then a3, that's right here, is a1 times r squared. And then next one, a1 times r third power, and so on, so on, so on. Cool. This is what we have. Now, let's do this again. But this time, not only I will be looking at s infinity, but I will actually multiply by r in the front. So imagine I'm just multiplying everything by r right here. So what's the first term? We will have r times a1. And let's line up, we will get a1 times r. Yeah? When we have r times all this, the first term is a1 times r. And the next one is r times this, which is a1 times r squared. And the next one, a1 times r cubed, and so on, so on, so on, right? And we will have infinitely many terms as well. But remember what we did like this earlier? I want to see a lot of cancellations. Everything is positive right now, I cannot cancel, but don't worry. Why don't we just negate the result like this? Have a look. On the left hand side now, I'm just looking at s infinity minus r times s infinity. And on the right hand side, this minus that, they cancel. This minus that, they cancel. And then everything else cancel. So, s infinity minus r times s infinity is just a1. Now you see we have s infinity here and s infinity here. Can we factor it? Of course. So this right here implies we have s infinity times 1 minus r equals a1. And of course, this right here implies after dividing both sides by 1 minus r, we get s infinity equals a1 over 1 minus r. Very nice, huh? But here is the catch. Here's the catch. In order for this to work, you will have to make sure that the absolute value, so let me just make a note, of r has to be less than 1. You have to make sure that the terms right here are getting smaller and smaller, approaching to 0 in order for this to work. And with this, we can actually go back to what I said earlier. Here's the deal. The absolute value of r is less than 1, meaning r is in between of negative 1 and 1. And then, raise that to the infinity's power, 
you will end up with zero. So imagine if you have one half, for example. If you take that to the infinity's power, meaning you just do one half times one half times one half infinitely many times, then you will see that the value it will be approaching zero. So just like that. That being said, if we have this right here, this part will be zero, and you just have a1 times 1, which is just a1, over 1 minus r. 